Minister, the, I want to ask you um, to outline in the Dublin North Division and the Dublin West Division, as of the 30th of September this year, the number of new recruits assigned to each division um, since recruitment resumed in 2014. And the reason for that is that in the North Dublin and West Dublin area, particularly the North Dublin area, um, we've lost one in five Gardaí in the last six years, and the level of this pace of replacement has not kept up at all with that, with community policing, which I'll address as well, has been decimated in that area with the park closure of Garda Station as well. So I'll be interested to hear from you the level of new recruits that have been assigned to those divisions. Thank you. Minister, two minutes. I welcome Deputy O'Brien to Justice Questions. Uh, we, Thank you. Thank you, we, Minister. We uh, uh, have, a, I suppose, a more customs engagement in, in the foreign affairs arena. Uh, but can I, um, can I welcome your, your question? And it did say at the outset that the distribution of Gardaí is exclusively the statutory responsibility for on Garda Commissioner. Uh, I can say, however, that the government is committed to ensuring a strong and visible police presence throughout the country in order to maintain and strengthen community engagement, provide reassurance to citizens and, of course, to deter crime. The substantial increase in Garda numbers is tangible progress on achieving this. The, the government's the government's vision of uh, an overall Garda workforce of 21,000 personnel by the year 2021, comprising 15,000 Garda Shiakana, uh, uh, 2,000 reserve members and 4,000 civilians. I'm pleased to say that Budget 18 will support the continuation of the high-level investment in the Garda workforce, ensure that the vision of an overall workforce uh, of 21,000 by 2021 remains firmly on track. A further 800 new Garda recruits will enter the Garda College. An additional 500 civilians will also be recruited to fill critical gaps across the organisation and to facilitate the redeployment of Garda from administrative and technical duties to frontline operational duties. Their plans to strengthen the Garda Reserve with new reserves expected to commence training uh, in, uh, in early in early next year. Um, I, I can I say for the benefit of the Deputy, notwithstanding the Commissioner's responsibility for the distribution of the Gardaí, I provided uh, for the record a breakdown of, of, of the detailed information requested by Deputy O'Brien in tabular form in relation to the number of Gardaí allocated to each Garda station in the Dublin metropolitan region as of the 31st of August this year, which is the latest date for which figures are readily available. Uh, the, Garda divisions, uh, the Garda divisions referred to uh, show that the Garda strength of the region uh, on that date was 3,467, with 181 Garda reserves and 208 civilians attached to the region. Where appropriate, the work of local Garda is supported by a number of Garda national units, such as the National Bureau of Criminal Investigation, the Garda National Economic Crime Bureau, and the Garda National Drugs and Organised Crime Bureau, all of which, all of which uh, are active in the region, as referred to by the Deputy. Uh, thank you, Minister, for the comprehensive response, and I look forward to going through the, the items in tabular format per station. What I would say to you, the reason I raise this is because I have a concern about the equitable distribution of resources. And while you mentioned it's a matter for the Garda Resources and Garda Management, I get that. But the reality of it is, if you take stations such as Malahide, which were downgraded by the previous government, that, and areas in North Dublin that were down, were down 20%. And areas that where there seem not to be a great Garda presence don't seem to, to be getting any of the allocation of, of, of the new Garda recruits. That's something that I'm concerned about. And I would, I would hope that there's a whole of government approach insofar as from your department actually looking, looking at um, how those resources are, are being distributed across, the, um, across Dublin. And there, tends, there tends to be a tendency also is that many of the new recruits tend to be going towards the more visible areas, i.e. in the cities. And whilst new recruits and additional resources are needed in the cities, the suburbs and the outlying areas of Dublin cannot be forgotten about. And that's the grave concern that I have. And in particular, when you look at the community policing figures that we have, where to take examples that for a whole area like Balbriggan, nearly 50,000 people to community Gardaí. For the whole Malahide district, down from six in 2014 to no community Gardaí. No, a decrease in swords as well and no community Gardaí in the Lusk area. So they're just examples of where, where it is obvious that we need to fill, fill those gaps. Community policing has been decimated and is crucially important for good policing uh, in any area, and particularly in my own area of Dublin, Fingal. Thank you. Minister to respond. I'll make these figures 
available to the Deputy now uh, to include uh, areas of importance to Deputy O'Brien, like Balbriggan, uh, Lusk, Skerries, Ballymun, Dublin Airport, Santry, Coolock, Malahide, Swords, Rahini, Clontarf, um, and, and uh, Hoth. Uh, I'd be happy to make this information available Thank you. immediately. Thank you. Um, and can I say that, that, that uh, it's important um, in the context um, of our policing that reference uh, is at all times made to the importance of community policing. Um, and I share Deputy O'Brien's concern in that regard. Uh, but can I say, that in, in relation to the earlier point um, about recruitment, with specific reference to Garda recruitment, the, the, the numbers which I've given, uh, a doubling of the Garda reserve uh, over the next period of time, uh, but also uh, to advise the Deputy that there are currently in the region of 2,000 civilians undertaking administrative and technical duties within Angarda Siakana. Uh, my target uh, is of 4,000 civilians. Uh, that will effectively uh, double this figure, uh, and it represents a medium-term target uh, of a 20% civilian participation by the year 2021. This will bring Angarda Siakana currently with 14% civilians, more into line with international norms, and ensure that trained Gardaí uh, are not really engaging in administrative work uh, or technical duties, uh, which could be done by suitably qualified civilian staff. Uh, I would be happy to keep the Deputy informed of that, although I, I, uh, I know the Deputy will keep me under uh, observation as far as these figures are concerned. Uh, but I would be happy to give the figures for the North Dublin region uh, now well, to Deputy O'Brien. Well, uh, <coughs> final supplement. Yeah, I very much appreciate that and the fact that you'll, you'll give me the figures there today. Just to give you a couple, a couple of examples, if you take, let's say, the, the Malahide district, which is Malahide, Port Marnock and Celia, a population of 27,000 people as per the last census. Um, no community guardee. Uh, the Swords Garda district, it's the size of a city, it's, it's larger than Limerick. As per the last census, just under 50,000 people, 10 community guardee. Balbriggan, again, the, larger than most region, regional towns and larger than some cities, a population of just under 40,000, two community guardee. Lusk, zero. Rush, zero, because the station is closed in Rush. We don't have a Garda station there. Skerries, zero as well. So I'm highlighting it on the basis that these are areas that need the Garda Siakana senior management to look at the areas whereby it's obvious that uh, that, that numbers are down. But in particular, the community Good policing. Morning. And I welcome your comments on that, Minister, that you support the, the concept of community policing, because community policing has been decimated in large swathes of this country and in my own constituency, Dublin Fingal. So I'd be happy to work with you and with Garda management to ensure that community policing actually is back to Good the morning. fore and is a priority uh, in areas across this country. Thank you. Thank you.